I'm here at the location of the 20th Main Monument on the extreme left flank of the Union line for the second day of the Battle of Gettysburg. The 20th Main barely got here on time. They were rushing here as fast as they could as the entire Union Army was rushing here once they found out about the battle on the first day of July of 1863. But the entire Union Army was starting to show up. They had barely gotten here when George Meade, Strong Vincent, Governor K. Warren, all sorts of different leaders were trying to get these regiments in place as fast as they could. The Confederates attacked just about four o'clock on the second day on July 2nd, and James Longstreet had John Bell Hood attacking this area right here towards the far left side of the Union line. Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain is told by Strong Vincent that he is the extreme left and he cannot retreat under any circumstances. And so he had no choice but to try to fight it out right here. Now, what he faced was an attack by the 15th Alabama. And at first, the first attacks happened towards the front of the Little Round Top area. And then, as the Confederates could not take that rocky area, they started to come around and around and around until they finally struck this area where the 20th Maine was located. The 20th Maine fought the 15th Alabama, and their regiments were pretty well evenly matched. Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain even had to get some guys from the 2nd Maine to join up with him, convince them to join up with him, just so he could have a capable fighting force to go with. He had lost so many men from Fredericksburg and Chancellorsville, they were down to under 300 men when they started out with 1,000 just less than a year before that. And so he doesn't have much of a force left, but he's fighting with everything that he's got. Now, the 15th Alabama attacked and attacked and attacked and kept on coming up this hill and up this hill. And every single time they started swooping around to his left and tried to get around, tried to hit him and attack him from the rear. Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain actually did a, a different maneuver here at this location of the marker. He created a right angle and he took his line back from there. And so there's actually another marker in the distance over there, which is where the line was refused, where the line was stopped and ended. But the other tough part was eventually they ran out of ammunition. He had no choice in his mind because he couldn't retreat. He had no choice but to bayonet charge down the hill at those Confederate forces as they were coming up. Lucky for him, they'd already fought for three hours. They were basically out of ammunition as well. And they were spent, they were tired. They didn't have much left. And so many of them just picked up and retreated and took off and the 20th Maine held the field. But Joshua Lawrence Chamberlain, originally a professor from uh, Bowden College in Maine, he did a fantastic job here and he secured the extreme left of the Union line. Now, in talking about that, they get a lot of glory for what they achieved in the far left of the Union line, but it is totally leaving out of the story what everybody else did. There are many New Yorkers up on that hill of Little Round Top. There are many other Pennsylvanians, many other men from New Jersey and other regiments throughout the entire Union that fought hard and they secured different parts of the Union line. There's also another regiment you're gonna learn about by the name of the 1st Minnesota. They were not on Little Round Top, but they're on Cemetery Ridge and they barely had any regiment left, but yet, they went and faced a, a force five times their size. But the battle on this second day of Gettysburg is filled with attack after attack after attack and just desperate defense by the Union where George Meade was placing troops there in the nick of time and they barely held on. They barely saved the Union. And this is just one of them. So the 20th Maine, again, with this monument here on the far left of the Union line, they're just one story of so many stories on the second day of the Battle of Gettysburg where the Union just barely held on to the United States of America as we knew it. If the Confederates could have broken through, the Union was gonna end up retreating back into the distance, probably towards York County, and the Confederates would have won the battle and perhaps the entire Civil War. But the Union pulled through and they just barely made it happen.